In this mini-clip, we will be discussing the transformation of trigonometric functions. While we answer this question together, you will be solving the similar problem on your own using the same technique. We're asked to sketch the graph of f of x equal to 3 times sine of x minus 2 pi plus 1. Taking a closer look at our equation, we'll notice the trigonometric function of sine. This means that our overall graph of f of x will be transformations based on our graph of sine of x. So let's now take a closer look at our graph of f of x equal to sine x. Hopefully we are all familiar with this graph by now. We have a maximum value of 1, a minimum value of negative 1, and x-intercepts at 0, pi, and 2 pi. From this graph, we are going to apply our various transformations to get our overall graph. The first transformation that we want to consider is this minus 2 pi. Subtracting 2 pi from x will cause our graph of sine x to move in the rightward direction by 2 pi units. In other words, we want to take all our x values on our graph of sine x and add 2 pi to them. Now to see what actually happens when we add 2 pi to all our x variables, I'm going to redraw our sine x graph here on the side. So I redrew my sine function, except this time I have two cycles. The first cycle from negative 2 pi to 0, outlined in red, and the cycle from 0 to 2 pi, which is outlined in black. Now, since sine is a periodic function, this means that it repeats itself every 2 pi, which we can see here in our graph. From negative 2 pi to 0 is a cycle of 2 pi, and then it starts to repeat itself. It has the exact same shape as our previous graph. Now, if I were to move this cycle over 2 pi units to the right, you will notice that we'll, we will actually get the graph of sine x. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this cycle and shift it over 2 pi units. So here we have negative 2 pi, so we want this point to shift all the way to 0. Now, once I do this, you will notice that we will get the exact same graph. So in fact, shifting our sine graph 2 pi units to the right does not change our original graph of sine x. Therefore, I can just change my original graph to sine of x minus 2 pi since it will have the same graph as sine x because the period is 2 pi. I would now like you to apply this transformation to the question that you were given. Here's the graph you should have got. Coming back to our question, we're now going to apply our second transformation, this 3 in front of our sine function. We will have to draw another graph. This graph will be 3 times sine of x minus 2 pi. Now because our new graph will contain the function sine of x minus 2 pi, we want to apply our transformation based on our previous graph, since this graph also has the function sine of x minus 2 pi. This 3 will cause our previous graph to stretch vertically by a factor of 3. This means that in order to get our new graph, we need to multiply the y values found in our previous graph by the number 3. So starting off by looking at our x-intercepts, these three points here, we know that our y value is equal to 0. 0 times 3 will still give us 0. So that means that our x-intercepts will remain the same. So we will start here, and we'll have another x-intercept at pi, and 2 pi. So we know we have to pass through these three points in our new graph. 
Looking at our maximum value here, it has a y value of 1. Multiplying this by 3 will give us a new maximum at y equals 3. Our x will remain the same at pi over 2. Our minimum value has a y value of negative 1. Multiplying this by, neg by 3 sorry, will give us a value of negative 3. Now we just need to connect these dots in a way that it will have a similar shape to our previous graph, except now it will be stretched vertically by a factor of 3. So this is how our graph of 3 times sine of x minus 2 pi should look like. I would now like you to apply this transformation to the question that you were given. And this is how your graph should look like. Now we just need to apply our last transformation, this plus 1. So we're going to draw our third and final graph. This graph will be of 3 times sine of x minus 2 pi plus 1. Again, because our previous graph contains the function 3 times sine of x minus 2 pi, we want to apply this last transformation based on this graph. Now the plus 1 will shift this graph here up by 1 unit. In other words, we need to add 1 to all our y values found in this graph. So let's start off with our x-intercepts. We know at these three points, our y is equal to 0. Adding 1 to y will cause on our new graph to have a y value of 1. So we know when x is 0, our y will now be 1. When x is pi, our new y value will be 1. And the same with 2 pi. It will now have a y value of 1. Our maximum value here has a y value of 3. Adding 1 to 3 will give us a new maximum of 4 when x is equal to pi over 2. This minimum has a value of negative 3. So adding 1 to this y value of negative 3 will give us a new minimum at y equals negative 2. Now we just need to connect these dots such that it will have a similar curve as our previous graph. And once again, this graph was simply shifted upwards by one unit. So here is our final graph. I would now like you to finish off the question that you were given. And here is your final graph.